activities that we're going to do today is we're going to have a town hall meeting. So in a second, I'm going to ask all of y'all to get up and go outside of the room and then come back in. And when you come back into the room, I don't want you to view this place as a classroom anymore, right? It's a town hall or Athens Clark County town hall meeting. And we are going to be discussing animals and education. And since it's a town hall meeting and we're not in the teaching of animals class, you guys can have any point of view on teaching guys can be in favor of it or you guys can not be in favor of it. So I just want to basically discuss, maybe debate a little bit of the pros and cons of teaching for animals. So if y'all don't mind saying the book, <laughs> kick us out. somewhere and I came back and it was gone. Mm -hmm. And apparently somebody had come in and thought, oh they needed this erase. And that poor fellow was like, oh my took me an hour to run. <laughs> I think that using a video of an animal is just really going to do us any good. And why so? There's no physical animal for the students to interact with. Mm -hmm. No, no uh, therapeutic touch. Okay. Uh, also, with no re reactions from the video, the animal can't, excuse me, be children. Not <laughs> <laughs> Slash animals. <laughs> <laughs> can't have any feedback from the animals, so mm -hmm. they will have no sense of non-judgment or acceptance that the animal could give them were there in person. Okay. So they can form like a connection with the animal and that they feel less judged. Um, okay, and there's benefits of the physical contact, it's the therapeutic. Um, so what do you guys think, so I believe in those, but what do you guys think about the risks of that? Like what if a child gets, gets bit by an animal that we bring in? That's like a negative physical yeah, um, so there may be concern with uh, the idea that bringing these animals in and having the kids interact with them in a, in, a, in a comfortable setting will make them more likely to want to do those things out in the wild. What do you think about that? Because they so, approach the animal out in the wild, and then they've, they've seen it in the classroom, they've been able to handle it in the classroom, so now they assume that they... They uh, can touch it in the wild, so that's a negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that definitely is a risk. They, they have seen the animal in a classroom, they feel more comfortable with the animal in the classroom, which may be beneficial in some ways, but then if they see it out in the wild, they can maybe go pick up a snake or a turtle when they shouldn't be and they can get sick or get bit or get hurt by doing that. So yeah, that definitely is a negative. So how do you think we would go about um, maybe deterring a child from picking an animal up in the wild if they see it in the classroom? Well, when you're endeavoring Oh, I know this is bad, so I'm not going to touch it. Mm -hmm. So sort of also just 
and maybe we could even get them to commit to not touching that yeah, in some way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so we've also talked about not judging. So do you think bringing an animal into the classroom will make students feel more comfortable or maybe make them more involved in the classroom? I think it might take them out of their comfort zone more than make them feel comfortable because some kids won't know how to handle it, but we can also give them the knowledge of the animal while they're in there and take them out and get them a little more comfortable around the animals they've never been with before. So do you think getting them out of their comfort zone is good? Yes. You just okay. can't stay in your comfort zone and learn anything. Okay. Um, so by bringing an animal into a classroom, we talked about noise in our class. Does bringing an animal to a classroom increase noise? Like would a video be less distracting or help them concentrate better? Um, I think uh, the actual like physical animal is more exciting and like more, I guess, a lot different than what students would be used to like in a conventional classroom. So I think they would pay more attention to an actual animal than like a video. Okay. Pay more attention. Okay. Um, but what if a child is say afraid should be the role of the educator or the person who's giving the um, who's giving the talk with the animal mm -hmm. to make sure that the child understands um, that there are certain risks associated but that it's a safe controlled environment mm -hmm. and that they should be comfortable but not to push it on them that if they don't feel comfortable they can exclude themselves from the lesson. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, so then we were talking about like the physical risks associated with animals that may be getting bit or maybe uh, contracting salmonella from a reptile. What do you guys say to those? Do you think those are outweigh the benefits of bringing an animal and the risks of someone getting hurt? Or even the safety of an animal, like what mm -hmm. an animal can get hurt in the classroom? Mm -hmm. So it definitely does outweigh the risks, but also just because you bring them in doesn't mean that has to be a pass around. So overall, are we thinking that animals in a classroom are beneficial, or not beneficial? What would you guys do in your classrooms? Would you guys bring animals in? Okay, so let, let's maybe take a vote. Um, if I, you won't think, I won't look, I won't look. <laughs> <laughs> so if you think we should uh, bring animals into a classroom, if you guys think bringing animals into a classroom would be better than a video, raise your hand. Okay, so maybe if you don't think that, so I think our town has decided I think animals should be brought into classrooms and should be a little tool for environmental education. And so now we're going to move on. Um, we are going to handle some animals and learning about some animal handling techniques today. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah let's, let's do it. This, this sounds great, Liberty. And I, I tell you what. And I'll just, as a little bridger on to what Liberty is sharing with us, we live in a world of accountability. Have you ever heard that we live in a world of accountability? Or standardized testing in schools. I mean, we hear about these things. They exist so that, whether you like them or not, so that teachers are accountable for what they're teaching. And there's outcomes of learning. So we're not just not saying that kids are going to school and sitting there. They're getting something out of it that's getting them somewhere. Because of the liabilities, and even though there were so many wonderful things shared in that reading, there were also some things later in that reading, the drawbacks of incorporating animals in the classroom, and liability and insurance things, and somebody getting bit or salmonella, that's a reality. 
And somebody may come up to you one day and say, yeah, but why can't you just show a YouTube video of that? And I want you all to be thinking as we start on Wednesday this week, thinking about how do we evaluate the difference that animals are making in teaching? How can we get data to say, this is the difference that an animal made? And it's not just me saying, yes, animals are good. It's the data saying, look at the difference this animal made. That's the kind of stuff we need today to say to somebody, well, why not a video? Well, here's why. Here's the data. Just like with standardized tests, here's the data that says learning is better than with a video when you use a live animal. So we're going to talk about that uh, starting on Wednesday, actually, as we start thinking about building a lesson. Uh, that's really, really cool. So right now, I think what we need to do is maybe if we can push the desk back just a little bit, these two, because we'll get up here in the front in a semicircle, kind of half moon, and uh, let's have some fun with it. Yeah. That's great. All right. Come on up to the front. Oh, yeah. I love those town hall meeting kind of things, you know, especially with, with middle schoolers, high schoolers. Give them a topic that they can debate that will really get them emotionally charged, and, and they'll really get into it. That idea of kind of debating that, and not that adults won't either, but kids will really get excited about it. And hopefully they'll start using data they read about and things to support their argument. That's a, that's a tough skill to teach kids to not be emotionally charged, but to be data driven when they make an argument. You know, let the data speak for itself. Um, so that's a cool thing. So, Liberty, I'm going to take this little lady that's inside here out and show everybody. And then we're going to do some handling of this little lady. But before I do, I want to talk about the A class of thing. I'm going to start with awareness. I'm going to start with a problem. And I'm also going to start with the idea of an expectation. So, we're going to talk about it. I think Chris just said we want to remove the audience from an experience if it could be potentially nervous, anxiety based for them. So y'all remember what we do when we're nervous? If you tell me that you're nervous, just sit on your hands, right? So I always make that expectation right up front, just in case there's that level of noise. I want to get you feeling okay about it. Now, the next thing I want to do is tell you that this thing that's inside here is a reptile. And there are five different kinds of reptiles that we can find really all over the world. Um, give me an example of a reptile. Let's see if we can name five different types. Give me one. Lizard. Yeah, lizards are one. Good. Snakes are another one. Good. Give me another one. Yeah, turtle. What was that? Is that all about all right, things? So, so turtles are good. So lizards, snakes, turtles. Two more. What about that school in the south? You know, that nobody likes it. Dinosaurs. That's right. That's right. That's right. Alligators. So yeah, I got alligators. And that's kind of, what's kind of like an alligator, but yeah. So crocodiles. So alligators, crocodiles, lizards, turtles, snakes, five different kinds. This reptile that's in here is full grown. If it's full grown, do you think it's an alligator or a crocodile? <laughs> <laughs> the bag would be like ripped open by now. Um, we are going to take a look at that's right. Yeah, we're going to take a look at alligators later this semester. So I'll get a little one. So I, I don't have an alligator in here. She's full grown. I've had her for about four years. She has a problem. And the problem is that because she puts on a show when she gets nervous, people think that she's not a safe animal, and they want to kill her. She can't help it. She's just scared when she gets nervous, and she doesn't want to fight, but she puts on this show to tell you, please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. Please leave me alone. So I'm going to show her to you. I, I really want to convince you not only that there's a problem that people are killing these guys, but also that they're really cute. And her name's Sandy. And I want to show you Sandy and just how cute her, her little face is. You know, I think it's pretty cute. And I'm going to take it out, and then I'm going to show you some things while I'm taking it out. And then I want to give her to Liberty. And then we're going to kind of have an experience where we pass her around, if you're comfortable. And then I'll take something else out and pass her. I want to try to do this some as we go throughout the semester handling. And the idea of transitioning from one person to the next to a live animal. How do you hand an animal to somebody um, and not let it drop or anything? And make it smooth, you know, make it look good, just how that's, how that's going. So, first of all, she is sitting up on a chair right now. Why do you think I did that? Why is she on the ground? She's used to being this much up on everything. 
Good. That's a good. What's that? Good. What, what else? Good. Good. That's one thing. That's good. Good. What else? So two things right here. One, her protection. If she's down on the ground, I could step on this bag or somebody could much more easily than if it's elevated. But then two, if it's on the ground and this thing is scurried out, it's a lot easier to scurry right out than it is up, up top like this. Sometimes animals will get out of a bag and they'll look and go, uh-oh, I'm not on the ground and they'll stop. And that's a good thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to open this guy up. What's so cool about using a bag like this, it's not clear so you can't see what's in it. So there's the surprise element right there, too. And I won't do the full show right now, but I, I'll just tell you. So there's a bag in here. Bag in here. And, and I'll also tell you, too, I'll, um, sometimes I'll do this. I'll say, and you all, you know my corny jokes and stuff. I'll say, well, I brought this reptile with me, and, um, well, son of a gun, I don't, I don't know if it's in here. And sometimes I'll reach around, and, and a lot of times I'll keep a, a little baby rattle in, in my bag. And I'll take the and I'll say it's a baby rattler that I had in the bag, and I'll take people I'll just laugh and go, oh my god. Anyway, um, so it's in a bag, right? It's in a pillowcase. Now inside of this bag, there's another pillowcase, just to let you know, because at our house, all the old pillowcases get reused. This pillowcase is it's just an empty pillowcase, but I keep it in there because this little lady gets nervous and she poops in the bag a lot. So I always keep an extra one just to keep her clean there too. So. I'm going to put that back in there. I'm going to take her out of this bag while it's still in this bag and not take it out like that. I've got a knot in the top of this thing. I'm going to show you as goofy as that sounds how to tie that knot. It's really kind of easy, but we don't want to tie it super, super tight so that you can't get it open in front of an audience. I've been there one time. I'll tell you a quick story. Somebody um, had a lady that was helping us out. She packed up the animals I was going to use that day, and I went out to go teach, and I had a reptile inside of a bag like this, a pretty big reptile in a bag, and there's a couple hundred people there looking at me, waiting for me to open this bag up. I couldn't get the bag up. I mean, the knot was like like a triple knot. I could, It was really kind of embarrassing. I finally got the thing undone, but so you don't want to put it too tight. You also don't want to put it too loose. I had the reptile that's inside of here one time in a bag that uh, wasn't tied very tight, and it got out. And got back behind the dashboard with the van, the state van that I was driving. We had to take the dashboard off to get the thing out of it. We went right back through the vent. So, oh my God. So, I'm going to reach in here and I'm going to just kind of show you. I'm keeping it in here, but I'm going to reach in. I'm not going to do this. Like, reach in to find out where its head is. I'm just going to kind of open the bag up like it's a little nest. All right? And I'll take it. I'm going to do this again for you just to show you. I want to locate her head that's in there. First, first things first, get, get a hold of that head about two inches back from the head. I just want to hold it, not tight, I just want to hold it. I'm going to show you this little lady. Look at this little sweetie. Mm -hmm. I kind of bring her out slow so it's dramatic, you know, she comes out of the bag, you know. And, so, and then I take the bag and I put it back in and I just kind of sip that so it's not gaping open. We don't want it to look open because that's more noise. People are wondering else is in there. Sometimes if I have a, a free hand and I can do it, I'll re-zip that up, but we'll keep that like that. And first of all, just to show you, look at this little cutie. This is Sandy. This is a western hognose snake. And they call them hognose snakes because you can look at that cute little face. They look like a hog's nose. They look like a pig's nose. And I'm, I'm going to turn her over to Liberty here in just a second. She's going to pass around and do a little thing with you. But I just want you to look. Look at the beautiful coloring. Her little face. She is, and when you hold her, you'll feel this. She's like a cat. She pushes up against you all the time. And it's not to put her scent on you or anything like a cat, but she just pushes up against you. I don't know if she's loving on you or what. I just, <laughs> hognose snakes like to do that. But Western hognose, and look at that tongue coming out. You know, you know what they're doing with that tongue? And her taste in the air. That's right. So she's just kind of looking around. Now, I'm going to come by you because we're all among educators and let you see your face like this. Typically, with an audience, I wouldn't let the face get that close to the audience, just in case. I'd usually let them see the tail like that. I'd keep the face near me. Look at the belly of her, too. Isn't that beautiful? Halloween kind of color on the belly. Just gorgeous. 
Um, I'm going to tell you a couple facts about her, and then I'm going to show you again how we get her out of the bag, and we're going to pass her around. Let Waverly do a little something with y'all. Um, so hognose snakes. This is full grown for a western hognose snake. We have eastern hognose snakes in Georgia. Eastern hognose snakes eat frogs and toads. Westerns typically eat mice, but they'll also eat frogs and toads. You will never, ever, ever see me on the same day have Sandy in class and Sanford. Do you remember who Sanford was? The tiger salamander? Now, why wouldn't I have Sanford on the same day as Sandy? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, as simple as that is, it's just one step further in our thinking. Go, wait a minute. If I hold Sanford and I forget to use the hand sanitizer and then I hold a hognose snake, there's a chance they might nibble on me. King snakes eat other snakes. The times that I've been bit the most have been when I've handled a snake and then handled a king snake, and the king snake smells the other snake on me. I had a, I had a king snake put my pinky finger in its mouth one time. Mm -hmm. It just kind of chewed on my, it didn't hurt, it just kind of put my pinky in its mouth because, yeah, it rains and it tastes good. You know? <laughs> so that was that, you know, so that's kind of neat. But western hognose, they eat frogs and toads, some, but mainly mice. Even if she tried to bite you, she has no teeth in the front of her mouth. None. Um, that's just, I didn't take them out, they just don't. They have two little fangs in the back of their jaw. And those fangs are used to deflate frogs and toads when they eat them. Because a frog or toad expands in their mouth and then shh, they kind of, nope, I'm going to eat you now. So they kind of do that. Kind of interesting. Now I'm going to tell you about the show that she puts on, and then we're going to pass her around. So I told you that the problem was people kill these guys a lot. The coloration on this, I have to show you on Wednesday. If you've ever seen a, a diamondback rattlesnake or a pygmy rattlesnake in Georgia, their small venomous snake looks so similar to this. And so people will see this at a distance and think, oh, that's venomous, and they'll kill it. If you, you have a chance to handle her, we'll pass her around. Feel around her, her neck and her stomach, just underneath of her neck. She has a lot of extra skin around her head. And she uses that extra skin because she puffs her body out. And especially up near her head, she'll raise her head up and push out the skin like a cobra. And so she'll sway back and forth like a cobra to try to distract and, just, and kind of tell an animal, hey, I'm venomous, leave me alone. If that stuff doesn't work, a lot of times she'll take this little blunt kind of tail that she's got and she'll vibrate that against the ground real quick. Hopefully if she's doing that in dry leaves, it sounds like a rattle and you'll leave me alone, you know. But if all that stuff doesn't work, she'll hiss, she'll raise up, she'll vibrate her tail. The last thing she'll do is she'll roll up on her back and play dead. And so it's amazing to see them with their mouth wide open, tongue hanging out, and then she'll poop when she's laying like that, so she smells bad, she looks dead, you never want to eat her. So she does all that stuff. I found one doing that one time, I was telling Liberty about it, and um, I rolled it back over, because I said, I know you're not dead. I rolled it back. <laughs> and it rolled up, it's like, no, 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 I really am. And it's just like, I'm not dead. It's funny stuff. But that just goes to show you, these guys who don't want to hurt us, they're just scared. That's why they're doing that. They're scared, they're so small, looking up at us, so it's kind of cool to, to look at that and see. Um, notice also that I said not venomous instead of non-poisonous. You all know the poison thing, venom thing. Kind of funny. So poison is typically something that might be in, ingested, or it might you know you touch, but venom is injected. It's sent in like a bee sting. Venom is shot in through the, the skin. So this is a non-venomous snake. So it's kind of funny. So what I'm going to do is I want to show you real quick. I'm gonna Put her back in the bag and take her out again, and then Liberty, I'm going to hand her to you, and we're going to do a little activity with her, if you're comfortable. Let me just ask while we're among friends, everybody comfortable with, with holding her in the bag? Is that okay? Okay? Okay. All right, good, good. And y'all let me know. Seriously, if you're not, it's, it's totally okay. Um, I'm going to put her back and then take her back out again. Um, one thing with snakes, I, I wrote this thing on the board, that word belts. So I always think about a belt, and I always wear belts, and when... When I was little, not that my dad would, would beat me with a belt or anything, right? But I remember when my dad would joke around, he'd joke around me, he says, I'm going to come and come get you. And you'd hear that, that belt clearing those belt loops. And not that he was going to, but what do you think about taking a belt off? You take a belt off and you kind of pull it out through the belt loops like this. I try to hold a snake like I'm taking a belt off. I try to keep that head of the snake right up against my hips. And I kind of keep that tail 
right out here in front of me. So the head is right against me, and the tail's out in front of me. The head's not back here. The head's in front of me, and the tail's out. Why isn't the head behind me? Do you think, why wouldn't I want to? Why wouldn't I do that? What do you think? Yeah, see, that's the thing. I was thinking about Shelby back here. So if, if Shelby was really interested in getting that close look, she could go and, and touch her right on the head. And kids want to do that. So the head's right up against our belt line, and the tail straight out in front of us, and we're letting folks two fingers touch the tail. The worst thing that can happen with the tail is, you know what, somebody can get a little messy. And that's okay. It's a lot better than somebody getting bit. Um, I want to put her back in the bag for a second. You'll see that she's small, so sometimes she can be hard to handle. Um, one thing I do want to do is I want to get the bag ready for her. So I try to put the bag down on a flat surface and just kind of open it up again like a nest. And she's really, really nice, but the last thing I want to do is let go of the head. All right, so I keep that head to the last minute. And then I, hey, Miss Rita, and then I put her in there. And I kind of pull it up just like I'm pulling curtains up around a magic trick or something like that. And she's back. Why do I keep the head to the last minute? Why not put the head in first and let it go? That could be one thing, absolutely. Bite me, yeah. I'll tell you another thing. Yeah, now you've lost control, because what I always do, they're big hands on stage. You put a snake in and let their head go, and then they whoop right back out the other side, and now there's a chance of them getting away. So keep that head to the last minute, and then, and then drop it in there. I try not to drop her into a bag when I'm holding it up like this, because that's just not comfortable, dropping her into a bag, even though it's a pillowcase, it just doesn't look good. Also, a thing that I will do, and I've seen colleagues of mine do, oh, I, I've never said anything to them, but I hate it, they will... In, to, to put this in a knot, instead of twisting the top, they'll twist the bottom of the bag. And you know how they do it? They just spin the bag around. Well, there's a poor snake in there. You know, I, I know it might be like a little ride for them or something, but that's, I wouldn't do that. I, I'd make sure that the snake is down in there, make sure that she's not trying to come back up, right? So I'm going to, and I think, I think she did go a little bit in there. She does that sometimes. I make sure she's not up in here, and I go to the top. Want to tie her or not. And I twist this around a little bit, and that's when I bring, let's see, she's back there. Now. That's when I bring this back around, just a little loop de loop, and put it back like that. And then I got a little knot, not too tight, but it's ready to go for next time. And then she's back in there. So, Lydia, you want to take her out, and um, we'll do a little thing with her here. And I've got the hand sanitizer, so if you pass her around, do that when we're done holding her. So I'll give her over to you. Isn't that cool? And the pillowcase, they can breathe right through it. Just like you pull your sheets up over your head, you know, you breathe through them. Same thing there. Great way to travel with a snake. I also think it's really important too when you're going to put them in a pillowcase. I like to always check the pillowcase, basically like run my finger around the pillowcase because if there's even the smallest little holes, snakes can like find a way to get out of it, especially if like that little seam right here just to kind of show you. I run my finger down through there, make sure, especially that little corner right there, that's where they'll find it. That's what they look like too. They'll find, they'll find it and then they'll get out that hole. So yeah, good, good point. Good, good. And we'll get this out of here. So right now we're going to do a little activity, sort of like a run-on sentence activity is what we were calling it. Um, so I want you guys to think back last week when we were talking about all the positive things that a good teacher do, we said a bunch of different things that what good teachers do, what good environmental educators can do, and I want to sort of figure out how we can relate that to what snakes do. So, for example, um, good environmental educators are flexible, and snakes are flexible as well. Alright, so I'm going to pass them around. There you go, and we let the head go last. Beautiful. Beautiful. And we'll, we'll keep that going. Yeah. So we got our run on sentence now. We've got our yeah. arches over there. Free She's to the handle her a little one. bit, her wiggle around. Yeah, and again, you don't want to hold them too tight. Um, they're going to move around. A lot of the times, too, I notice that when you're holding snakes, they move around a lot at the beginning, but then eventually they sort of just like, they're like, oh, I'm just going to go in there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so try and relate a snake to what a good educator would be. Okay, so a good educator, 
Especially when they, the warmer they get, the more oh, yeah. enthusiastic they get. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Cold blooded, my guys. <laughs> <laughs> I do really believe that animals. Wait, can I get a picture with him? <laughs> sure, sure you can. Sure, you can. <laughs> These animals are used to it, you know. But that's such a good point to bring up, that, that, that uh, Brittany, that idea of building uh, a sense of rapport with teachers. It really does. You know, you all see me with the animals, and I know I'm, I'm a pretty intimidating guy. Right? <laughs> when you see me with the animals, man, he is, he is just halfway normal, you know. <laughs> Great point. We've learned a lot about that from the guide dogs. Okay. Sorry, first time holding a snake, very nervous. Very okay. Good. And that's okay. So, so that's okay. Go there you go. That's why we're here. So it does feel freaky. I mean, they're moving a lot, and yeah. you are that's okay. afraid. Moving. Yeah. <laughs> that's okay. You did it. You did it. Oh yeah, you did it. Good. Oh, okay. Good. Uh, I was gonna say.
and she is a sweetie. I mean, she is just the best. <laughs> um, this makes her interesting. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Absolutely. <laughs> That's all I can come up with. Good enough. That's, That's great. That's great. Do you have a test run? A total tail first. Um, good. Good job. So I have one in my head, but uh, <laughs> it, it went okay. So snakes have eyes, and educators can see the eyes on the flies. <laughs> there you go. Can I just say something real quick? Yes. The one thing that was stuck in my head the whole time was that video of that guy that was like, I'm a slippery little snake. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what was stuck in my head. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Yeah.
this lady to Liberty. You want to get her tied back up there. She's down there.
Hey, Liver, are you staying here for a second or you have to? I can stay for a second. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, thanks, thanks. Okay, so we have our meetings there, and they're normal, like, normally formal meetings where we like go through our club business, but it's also supposed to be our hangout spot where we can just come and you know, do homework and stuff. Mm-hmm. So as a chaplain, I was thinking of having Sunday nights. Um, I don't know what you do on Sunday nights, but on Sunday nights, once a month, having a guest speaker come yeah. out to the club yeah. and just doing, like, just sharing a message, maybe. It doesn't have to be about Jesus or anything, you know, if you don't want it to be. But okay. just uplifting college students. Yeah, and so okay. I talked, I don't know if you know who Dr. Pringle is. Sure, sure. I talked to him. and Dean he, Pringle. Yes. Yeah, got gotcha. And yeah. Um, so he was telling me, you know, what professors to go to. But I also wanted to offer it to you and see if you wanted to come out yeah. one Sunday night. And okay. so I'll yeah. email you about it and, like, you can send me some availability yeah. of whenever yeah. you are. I'd be glad to look at it. Sure, so, um, sure. But, yeah, we've had a lot of interest. In our club, we have like 90 members, and so I've been asking around. Members? Mm-hmm. Wow. I've been asking around, and I'm like, hey, if I did this, would if I set this up, would y'all come out on a Sunday night? Like, they're like, yeah, we don't have anything to do on a Sunday night. Right. And so right. I just want it to be a place where when they come on Sunday nights, they can hear somebody who's related to ag- the agriculture industry in some way, but also like a friendly face that uplifts college students. Well, glad you thought of me. Yeah. I enjoy that. I'll email stuff. you though, sure. and uh, we can set up. Okay. We can work out time. But if you if you're interested, oh, I'd love to. Send me some things. You can yeah. also bring your animals too. If that I probably will <laughs> bring a couple things. I, mean, I always do that. But yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I don't know if you know yeah. like Sadie Lackey and some yeah, of the other people, sure. but I mean they're all they're all like, yeah, go get Dr. Furman. And I'm like, Sadie okay, was well. in here last year. Yeah, she yeah. said she loved her class. Yeah. I, I, it's so funny what Frank said too. It, it's so funny when you I teach in the same room. So this is the second year. So when you teach at the same room, I always think about, like, I remember where Sadie sat. And it's just like, everybody, it's just funny, yeah, you know? Yeah, we're all yeah. friends in the college yeah, magazine. So yeah. they're, they're all like, oh, yeah, we'd love if he came. So oh, that, I well, think I'll you. ask you and see. Please. I'd love it. Shoot me some dates, and then uh, we'll do that. We'll, I'll, look at, I'll talk to Jess, and uh, I'll just come on out. And, oh, that'd yeah, be great. Yeah. Course. You guys said 7 o'clock. Is that yeah, what you well, said, like Sunday 7? 7, 6.30, somewhere sure, in there. Like, sure. We haven't, like I said, I haven't 